Hello everybody, I'm Mike King from Profiling Evil and I want to share with you a new story map I'm releasing today called Babyland. Now I'm talking specifically to you GIS geeks out there because I want to share with you how I leverage some of the Esri products in the ArcGIS family to go out and to fly and collect imagery on an infant cemetery that is more than 75 years old. It's a secret little place in the FLDS polygamous community of Short Creek. And the reason it's been so troubling to me over my career is that it's filled with about 250 or more infants who died somewhere immediately after birth or within the first couple of days of life. You know, I served as an investigator for the Attorney General's office and ultimately as the Chief of Staff to Attorney General Jan Graham. During my time there, I was responsible for looking at closed societies, which included polygamy. And my responsibility was to go into those communities and try to uncover allegations of child brides, child sex abuse, and other kinds of violations of state law. As I went into the community, I was always troubled as I drove by the infant cemetery because I saw stones like you're seeing on this uh, screen right now that simply said baby girl and a date, sometimes only baby. And sometimes there was no indication at all of whether it was a boy or a girl or what year they were born or died. It really troubled me because these children were born without a birth certificate. And not only were they born without a birth certificate, which is a violation of state law that they somehow got away with, but when they died, they were buried without a death certificate ever being issued, which is an, another violation of law because it's that instance when that death certificate is filed that law enforcement makes sure that a death investigation has occurred so that there's not something going on that we're not aware of or something that's criminal in nature. It never happened. And so 250 children came into the world, were never documented, and died, and then now don't even exist on any public record. And I wanted to change that because I was so frustrated by that. I waited through my entire career to do this, and just a few months ago I retired and headed down to, to the Short Creek area where the FLDS stronghold is. This is the place where Warren Jeffs started to pollute everything that had to do with the FLDS church, leading to his eventual arrest for child sex crimes and his imprisonment for life. You can look up more about that either on Profiling Evil or just in the news. So before I go into how I use GIS, I want to just share with you the, the story map in brief. You can go in and learn a little bit more about Babyland or what's uh, formerly called the Hildale Infant Cemetery. In there, you'll learn a little bit more by going in and looking at some of the videos and the deeper dives that I've done on Profiling Evil. But here's the most important part, is that the children were born without birth certificates, and they died without death certificates, and thus, it never an investigation into the causes for their death. The explanations you received for the babies in the cemetery ranged from everything from those conspiracy theories that suggested the babies were murdered and simply stuffed in the ground, all the way through to loving and caring families who felt that these little special children deserved a cemetery of their own, and that's why they're set off in this area. At the Attorney General's office, our concern was that it might have something to do with a hereditary or genetic disorder because of all the inbreeding that goes on in the FLDS community. In fact, some media reports suggest that 99% of the people there are related to one another. Now, Fumar's disease is a genetic disorder that kind of follows the line of Down syndrome, and yet it leaves these terribly um, horrible birth defects as a result. We don't know if that's the reason these babies are there, and because they never had death investigations, we may never know. So one of the things I wanted to do is look at national statistics around infant mortality. The records within Short Creek are so bad that it's really difficult to compare apples to apples. So all I can do is theorize based on what I've learned. But the number of children deaths during that same period of time wasn't that far outside of the national 
infant mortality rates that we experienced in the United States. Now, as I looked closer, I could sometimes theorize that there may have been a 20% higher propensity for children to die in Hildale and Colorado City than in other places in the United States, particularly because they relied on midwives and they didn't go to emergency centers. Uh, the closest hospital was probably 45 minutes away. So that may be part of the reason. But one thing I did find that was very interesting to me was that there were a small core number of families who were responsible for a large number of babies buried within the cemetery. Now that might be because these were polygamous families where the man had a bunch of wives. Or it might be that they were doing something like carrying something like Fumar's disease genes. The other thing that people have been concerned about is they've wondered if the polygamous community was killing baby boys because they considered that they would be competition later in life as they looked for more and more wives to put into their polygamous families. In looking at the actual graves and trying to determine who was male and who was female, it looks like it's a pretty even split between male and female and then, of course, a third that are unknown. But again, very interesting. It kind of dispels some of the mystery around that. You know, I was so troubled because as I went to the city of Hildale and asked government officials for an official plot map of that cemetery, they wouldn't respond. Now, the word on the street is there's nothing that ever existed. So I went over to the town of Colorado City and found the same answers that no one has ever created a map and any records that may have been recorded were destroyed by fire a long time ago, and I might know purposely by fire. I was able to go into the Washington County property records, and I found that a company called the UEP, which is a trust that was set up after the Attorney General seized all of the property owned by the FLDS and Warren Jeffs, that that, that property has now been sold off to a 501c3. The people in charge of the 501c3 wouldn't return my calls or talk to me about this case. But I was able to meet with the lead for the United Effort Plan and learn from him that they would love to have a public map. So I've shared my map with them and I've promised that as soon as they publish, publicly publish a map that I'll take mine down. Now for you GIS geeks, let's just go into how we built this map. First, I went out with my DJI Mini 4 Pro drone and flew the area. And I flew it at two different elevations, 100 feet and 150 feet, with a 75% angle on the gimbal in order to collect both 3D and 2D imagery in high resolution. I abandoned the 3D idea after I started looking at it because, again, this is a flat cemetery and there really was no need to have any kind of three-dimensional feel to it. From there, I took advantage of using ArcGIS Drone to Map to stitch all the images together and create a, a service that I could put out on top of ArcGIS Pro or bring into ArcGIS on Online like I've done here. So using Drone to Map, I was able to accomplish getting the data updated with high resolution imagery and into a map. From there, I went to ArcGIS Survey 123 and created a, a survey where I could go out and collect the grave information. And this is where the heavy lifting began because I had to go out and painstakingly collect every one of those uh, grave markers, identify the exact location of the grave, and take a photograph of the tombstone. And then, and then from there, I went out and created a web application that I could share with the public. And we're looking at that. And, uh, and what I took advantage of are the instant apps in the ArcGIS ecosystem. And here you can see the quality of the imagery as we zoom in and out. You can see that I went in and collected not only the exact location of the grave, but I took a picture of the tombstone. And then I put in a new little section where family members could record some memories of that little child on their mobile phone and upload them to us in order to put into this same uh, map as you're looking at it so that people can watch video and learn a little bit more about the child that was buried there. 
So using ArcGIS Drone to Map, Survey123, and Instant Apps, I'm able to put together a map that I can share publicly with you. And that map is also intended for members of the FLDS, particularly those who have left the faith and are now in a position that they can share information about their loved one. Our hope is that they'll upload a video and tell us a little more about how important that child was to them, and perhaps shed a little more light on what caused their deaths. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of how I use GIS to map out a 75-year-old polygamist infant cemetery. And you can find out more by going over to Profiling Evil on YouTube or visit us at ProfilingEvil.com. I want to personally thank Jack and Laura Dangerman for allowing me to continue to use ArcGIS software as we try to do good things in the world and make a difference. You know, I loved my career there and I'm loving the opportunity to continue to contribute. Hey, thanks for visiting Profiling Evil and we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.